we have two types of logarithm that is the natural logarithm and the common logarithm business applications that is problems on arithmetic and geometric progressions what do we mean by a matrix a matrix is nothing but an arrangement of numbers in rows and columns Hello everyone, I am Purnima, faculty in the Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Grade College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. In this session, I will be having a discussion on the syllabus related to quantitative techniques which is prescribed by the Mysuru University for the 4th SEM BCom students. Now, let us have a look into the syllabus here. So in the syllabus, in Unit 1, it deals with indices. Unit 2 deals with progressions, Unit 3 deals with ratio and proportions, Unit 4 matrices and determinants, Unit 5 probability and Unit 6 theoretical distributions. Now let us have a look into what are the various units comprised of. So in the chapter indices, we will be dealing with what is the meaning of indices. So indices means it is an indicator of something or indices is the plural of the word index. So any number raised to a power. So it means that the base of that particular number should be repeated so many times. So we will also be dealing with the laws of indices. So we have almost six laws for indices and their application for simplification. So based on the sixth law of indices, we will be working out problems and simplifying the problems. Then next one is logarithms. So what do we mean by logarithms? Logarithms means a shortcut for arithmetic. Suppose you have very big numbers and you don't know how to add or subtract it. So with the help of the log tables, we can always do the addition, subtraction, multiplication and division for the various arithmetical problems. Now in logarithms also, we have the laws of logarithms and we will also be studying about the common logarithms. Now we have two types of logarithms that is the natural logarithm and the common logarithm. So this uh, session will be usually we will be focusing on the common logarithms and we will also be working out problems on logarithms for simplification. So this comprises the first chapter. So from the indices chapter usually we get mark questions for almost 30 marks. Then the next chapter or the unit 2. In unit 2 it will be related to progressions. Now in progressions we will be studying about the meaning of sequence and series. Now suppose I write 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. What does it mean? It is a sequence of even numbers. Or if I write 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, it is a series of odd numbers. Now we will be studying the difference between the sequence and the series. And then we will also be studying about arithmetic progression and geometric progression. Now what is the difference between arithmetic progression and a geometric progression? In an arithmetic progression, there will be a, a common difference between the consecutive numbers whereas in a geometric progression, the numbers will have a common ratio. The consecutive numbers will have a common ratio. Then we will have the general terms and sum of n terms of AP and GP. So what is the nth term of the AP? What is the nth term of the GP etc. Then we will also have business applications that is problems on arithmetic and geometric progressions. So in the second chapter it is devoted fully to progressions and almost you will get for 25 marks, questions for 25 marks from this unit 
2. Now, the next unit 3, we have ratio and proportion. Now, in this ratio and proportion, we will be studying about ratios. Now, what is ratio? So, you will be just, it is an expression of two quantities in relation to one another. So, the number of men and women residing in a particular area. So, the ratio of men and women, it may be around 10 is to 9 or it may be 10 is to 8. So, depending on the number of men and women residing in a area. So, then what is proportion? What is variation? What is percentages and their applications to business? So, all this we will be studying in ratio and proportions. Then, in the next fourth unit, we will be having a study of the matrices and determinants. Now, what do we mean by a matrix? A matrix is nothing but an arrangement of numbers in rows and columns. So, what are the rows? What is the arrangement of numbers? Suppose I write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, this is an arrangement of numbers in rows and columns. Then, this is a matrix of the order 3 by 3. So, 3 rows and 3 columns. Then, what do we mean by determinant? So, determinant is the value of the matrix, meaning of the determinants, then the types of matrices. So, in the types of matrices, we will be studying about what is a zero matrix or a null matrix, what is a scalar matrix, what is the identity matrix. So, all this we will be studying in these matrices. Then, we will also have a study of addition, subtraction and multiplication of matrices. Then, next we will also be studying about what is determinant of a matrix, evaluation, solutions of linear equations using Grammar's rule. So, most of this you would have studied in your high school maths. So, same we will be having a repetition of that. Then, next, in unit 5, it is related to probability. Now, what is probability? It is the happening or the non-happening of an event. So, that we call it as probability. So, what is the meaning of probability? Utility of probability to business. So, why probability is useful to business? With the help of this probability, we will be able to forecast the business result. So, what is the projected profit for the next year? What is the projected demand of the goods for next year? What is the projected sales for the forthcoming year? So, all this we will be studying here and the key terms used in probability, then experiments, deterministic and random experiment. Then we will also be having a discussion on the various terms which are exclusively used for this probability. That is what is sample space and what are the different types of events. So, all this we will be studying here. Then about common illustrations used in solving problems on probability. So, approaches to probability. So, we have the different approaches like the classical approach, the relative frequency approach, subjective axiomatic probability problems, etc. So, all this we will be studying in probability chapter and finally the last unit for the syllabus it relates to theoretical distributions. Now what do we mean by distribution? Distribution is nothing but you are just spreading something. So how do you any anything which has to be distributed it will be based on some arithmetic. So there are various types of distributions. So, in this unit, we will be studying about the various types of distributions. That is, random variable observed and theoretical distributions. We will also be studying about meaning, properties and problems on binomial distribution and fitting a binomial distribution curve. Then, we will also be studying about Poisson distribution. What is the meaning and condition for Poisson distribution? What are the properties, applications and illustrations for fitting the Poisson's distribution? Then we will also be having a study of what is the normal distribution. So, how, what is the significance? 
what are the properties of normal standard normal curve area under normal curve problems of area under normal curve fitting the normal curve and fitting the normal distribution so here we have this a normal distribution and the area under the normal distribution which is equal on both the sides so this is the entire syllabus for the fourth sem bcom students now let us have a look into the internal position now in the internal position the internal assessment will be for 20 marks in the first internals we will be i will be giving problems on first two chapters that is indices and progressions then in internals two we have ratio proportions matrices and determinants and internal three we it will be related to probability and theoretical distributions now Final marks will be awarded on the average of three internals. So, uh, if you are attending all the three internals, uh, based on the average of the three internals, the final marks will be awarded. Then, next, let us look into the question paper pattern. So, in part A, it will be 20 marks each. So, that comes up to 40. Then, in part B, it will be 10 marks, two questions for 20 marks. Part C, 5 marks, 4 questions for 20 marks. So, this will be the question paper pattern. And in this 20 marks, so we will be having 10 marks questions too. So, under each uh, heading, we will be having 2 questions of 10 marks each. So, it will be comprising of 20 marks. Then, next, let us see what are the books for reference. So, Business Mathematics by D.C. Sanchiti and V.K. Kapoor and Commercial Arithmetic by Hyer and Barry. So, these are the various books you have to refer here. And now, let us look into the chapter wise uh, uh, marks allotment. So, from unit 1, usually you get for maximum of 30 marks. For unit 2, it will be 20 marks. Unit 3, 35 marks. Unit 4, 35. Unit 5, 30. And unit 6, also 30 marks. So, this is the distribution of marks. If you see the distribution of marks, you can always uh, say that almost all the chapters are equally important for you. Then let us see what is the learning outcome. So in the learning outcome, we can see that we can understand the relevance and the need of quantitative methods for making business decisions. So this, when you study this quantitative techniques, if you are a businessman, you will be able to make certain decisions based on quantitative techniques because as you all know, maths is very, very accurate and then we can make proper decisions then so we should be able to apply quantitative methods to solve a variety of business problems then lastly we will be formulation and application of mathematical models in business decision making scenario so with the help of mathematical models we can uh, formulate and apply the mathematics for making of business models so we have come to the end of the session. Hope you have all liked this session. Thank you.